The Sony a7 IV is Sony's newest full-frame mirrorless camera featuring a 33 megapixel sensor with 4K 60p video recording. We had the awesome opportunity to take this camera diving in Socorro, Mexico and came back with some amazing photos and videos. We think this camera is great for enthusiasts and professional underwater photographers and videographers. Hey guys, this is Nirpom with the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now, this is just a quick video to reminisce about my time with the Sony a7 IV. Um, it's not gonna be as extensive as a review as I've done of other cameras like the Sony a7S III or the Sony a1 uh, because the a7, uh, a7 IV is so similar, but I just had to give the camera back and here I am with the housing that I used to um, take the photos and videos for the review. Uh, so that's why I don't have the camera right in front of me and I'm just sitting here kind of reminiscing about the time I spent with it. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, the Sony a7 IV is the newest camera in the Sony a7 full frame mirrorless camera lineup. It is an update to the Sony a7 III, but the Sony a7 III is also very old. So since then we've had the Sony a7S III, the Sony a7R4, the Sony a1. So Sony's uh, naming system is just all over the place, much like their A6000 series. Don't pay attention to that. What you need to know is the Sony A7 IV, not the Sony A7R4, but the Sony A7 IV is an excellent hybrid photo, video, full frame mirrorless camera for prosumers or enthusiasts, and a lot of underwater photography professionals will be quite happy with it as well. Um, just because it's not the most expensive camera on the market doesn't mean that it wouldn't work great for professional. It would, honestly, if I had to go out and buy a camera after shooting with this camera, it would be the Sony a7 IV. And I can say that as a Nikon shooter. I mean, I shoot all cameras, but my personal system that I'm filming this video with is actually a Nikon Z6. I am finally starting to regret buying into the Nikon system. I love this camera. Um, the Canon R5 is still my favorite camera of all time, but if I had to go and spend my own money, um, $24.99 for the Sony a7 IV is a great all-around camera purchase, and it does both excellent photo and video, so I just want to talk about my experience with that. Um, starting off, I just want to list some of the specs so that you guys know where we're where we are with this camera. So the Sony a7 IV is a 33 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera. Uh, so that's a pretty good resolution. It's a pretty decently high resolution. It's not the highest in the world, but it's also not a really low resolution. I think it just kind of hits 
the right points with 33 megapixels because the pixels are large enough where you don't have tons of noise, um, but they're also not, you know, but it's also high enough resolution so that you can do crops and you can take macro and you can crop those photos pretty decently and still get awesome results. So I like the resolution. Now, the camera actually does something pretty cool with its ISO. It has a dual gain ISO, just like the Sony a7S III and the Sony A1. It's not a true dual gain uh, sensor, but it kind of, it, it does something with the signal so that basically your lowest ISO is 100 and that's your base native ISO and that's what the lowest amount of noise would be. But then you have a second base ISO at 3200. So if you're a dedicated video shooter or you like to shoot photos at a really high ISO, you can actually go all the way up to 3200 and your noise drops right back down. So you go up, up, up with the noise as you increase your ISO and then at 3200 it drops down and it's clean again. So it's a really excellent camera for low light shooting. And a lot of what I was doing in Socorro was low light. Now, I hadn't read that ISO spec when I was diving in Socorro with the a7 IV, so of course I was just shooting around 100 to 600 or 800, and I was getting some really clean footage, I was getting some really clean photos, and I thought the image quality was excellent from the camera. Uh, but what's really impressed me the most has been the change in ergonomics, and it's not a significant change, but it's just, the incremental change that Sony has had over time has really put the a7 IV above and beyond what the a7 III used to be. And I finally think that Sony is probably one of the best cameras out there when it comes to ergonomics and when it comes to its menu system. So they've completely redesigned the menu system. It has a new menu system uh, that was carried over from the a7S III. It's got an RGB coloring feature so that you can know where you are in the menu system. It's really easy to know what setting is what. The definitions of the settings don't make, or it's, now they make sense. They, they don't not make any sense anymore. <laughs> um, so that's been pretty nice uh, to be able to see nice a nice laid out menu system. But most importantly, the uh, dial switch has kind of changed where instead of having to scroll around on the dial, on the mode dial, and go from photo and video and scroll forward and then back and trying to get between photo and video, all you have is a simple switch on there that switches between photo and video, and then the mode dial is just for the modes, manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, all of those modes. Uh, if the secondary switch makes it so that all you have to do is switch between photo and video and it'll remember your settings. And it's a really easy camera switch. It's kind of like the Nikon uh, series cameras which also have that same photo to video switch. So I really love that change in the ergonomics, but it could cause some interesting issues with some of the housings. Um, now going beyond that, uh, I just felt like the feel of the camera was really nice. I mean, I went for Nikon because I like the feel of the cameras and now I'm feeling like the Sony a7 IV feels like that to me. I mean, the button layout is awesome. There's so many customizable buttons, way more than Nikon and honestly, more than Canon as well. So I think the amount of customization you can do is, is great. There's a C1 through C4 button, but you can also customize all your other buttons. So you've got an endless possibility with your workflow, and that to me is really important. Uh, you can check out my A7S III or A1 uh, underwater settings reviews so that you can see what kind of customizations I do and what kind of workflows I do, depending on if I'm shooting photo or video. Um, Going beyond that, the video specs are really where I'm a little bit torn with this camera. So I love the fact that you can shoot 4K at 60 frames a second. That makes it really easy to stabilize your underwater footage. But at the same time, that 4K 60 is actually at a 1.5 times sensor crop. So the camera goes into APS-C camera mode and it crops the sensor in order for you to get the 4K 60. Well. When it does that, you lose that field of view and the image quality is not quite as good as if it used the full width of the sensor. So I wasn't super stoked with that, but at the same time, I just got used to that crop and I shot 4K60 for all my video anyway. The a7 IV does have all the same great features uh, like S-Log2, S-Log3, uh, Cinetone. It, it has the full gamut of um, of picture profiles that's offered. Uh, it can shoot 10-bit 422 um, and overall like the quality of the video is still really nice. It's still kind of like shooting an a7s 
3, but you don't have that 4K 120 and you don't have the full width of the sensor. So if you're a real video shooter, definitely look at the a7S 3 but if you're c truly a hybrid shooter, you want photos and you want video, the a7 IV does an amazing job for both. And I went on this trip to Socorro and just came back and I was super happy with both results that I got. Now, the final area where I really felt the a7 IV has been a big improvement uh, from past Sony cameras is the autofocus. Now, the autofocus system is the same that we see in the A1. It's lightning fast, it's amazing. I mean, Sony's been amazing for quite some time when it comes to their autofocus. But what I really enjoyed with the A7 IV was I picked up a Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye lens. I put a Sigma MC11 adapter on it. I shot it underwater and you know what? The autofocus tracking worked great. Uh, I did not, like, I. it was a little bit slower than it would be with a native Sony lens, but it wasn't that much slower. It was quite functional. It worked for all my purposes and I really didn't miss a shot due to autofocus. So I finally feel like even though Sony doesn't have a native fisheye lens, the Canon 8 to 15 fisheye works. And I'm a fisheye shooter. I like shooting fisheye. I shot only fisheye when I was in Socorro and it worked out for me. So I was super happy about that. Um, so with that, I just kind of want to give a couple of my conclusions and my thoughts on, you know, how the camera performed when I was in Socorro. So when it came to the underwater photography and the picture quality, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, overall, like I said, the autofocus was lightning quick. The autofocus tracking worked really well. So the camera could find the point that I wanted it to hit. It would hit on the point, whether it was a shark's eye or, um, you know, uh, a school of fish and it would track that school of fish as it swam. Now the animal eye autofocus tracking doesn't quite work so much, so it's not quite like the Canon series cameras, but the standard Sony autofocus tracking worked great and that's the only autofocus system that I used the whole time just because I knew it would work, I knew it would keep focus, and it did. I never lost a shot due to focus, and that was pretty cool. Especially when I was freaking out and there was a big whale that was just swimming right by me. I didn't know what to do. I pointed, I shot, and the camera did it all, and that's what you really want in an underwater camera. So I was pretty stoked about the focus. Now, what I was not too happy about when it came to the photography was actually an image quality issue that I noticed. It's not a huge issue, but on some of my underexposed images, I actually noticed that there was banding uh, in the in the from the sensor when I increased the exposure. Now you do have to be you know two to three stops underexposed. So that's pretty underexposed. But there are certain photos where I might have part of the image properly exposed and part of the image two stops under exposed and I want to bring up those two stops a little bit. Well, I did notice at times there could be some banding, especially if you started to sharpen up that photo, that banding would really show up. So uh, you just have to be aware of that. It's not a deal breaker. I mean, I would still go out and buy this camera. There's very few circumstances where that would happen and most of it would be in blue pelagic water photography like I was doing in Socorro. If I was shooting on a reef and there's actual detail in the water, I wouldn't get that banding because it would cut up the bands uh, in the photo. So, you know, it's not a huge deal at all, but that was my one complaint about the camera altogether. Um, now, moving on to video, again, my biggest complaint is cr a crop in the 4K60. I mean, it's fine. Uh, you get used to that. Beyond that, the video looks awesome. I was super happy to be shooting S-Log3 again. Uh, and I was just happy that the autofocus was keeping up when I had the MC11 adapter on my Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye. Like that, I wasn't expecting, uh, but I was able to shoot in autofocus and it worked well. Um, now, one thing to note is that if you do ever need to push that record button when you're in photo mode and you can't use the switch going from photo to video, uh, you actually get your focus stuck. You can't, you're stuck in manual focus. You can't use autofocus. And I think that might've been because I was shooting with a third party Canon lens. So a very specific instance right there. Um, but it's just something to note. You always want to be in the video mo mode when you're shooting video. Uh, but it did a great job overall. And the focus peaking actually worked quite well. One thing that I noticed on the camera was it didn't have those buggy issues I noticed on the Sony A1. The autofocus, or the manual focus peaking in video, uh, which is that tool so that you can actually see what's in focus and what isn't, that worked well on the A7 IV. It didn't bug out, it didn't disappear at times. It was always there and I was always able to tell what if my video was in focus and where that focus was. Um, and for those of you, again, that don't know, it shows like this red 
sheen over the video and you can kind of see where the red is, that's where it's in focus. So that's a nice tool to use um, and it worked really well on the a7 IV and it was nice to see that Sony updated that bug that I, I saw in the Sony A1. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. And if you need us to put together a package, uh, a housing for the Sony a7 IV, we've got housings from Merilux, Nauticam, Eichlight, and Aquatica. Aquatica just came out. So we've got all those housings. We can put together a system for you. They all work excellent with the camera and they'll have full functionality. I hope you guys enjoyed the photos, the video, and I hope some of you guys get this camera in your hands. Let me know if you do, drop a comment, and happy diving.